The only way that quantum computers will gain advantage over classical computers is quantum error correction. Qubits are fragile and susceptible to the slightest disturbance from their environment, causing errors. Most of today's quantum computers can still only perform 100 or so operations before they become unreliable. To solve real-world problems, such as modeling chemical reactions to design new drugs, they'll need to perform many millions of operations. This is only possible with quantum error correction. We're addressing this challenge by building an operating system for quantum computers that can keep up with the immense data and computational requirements needed to perform quantum error correction. From a user's perspective, the operating system produces error-free logical qubits from many unstable physical qubits. It's these logical qubits that will enable users to build reliable applications easily and quickly. Behind the scenes, the kernel of the operating system made up of three key elements, a control system, decoders, and a runtime system, repeatedly performs the complex calculations and issues the instructions that are needed to detect and correct errors as they occur. The control system sits closest to the qubits. Its job is to manipulate their quantum states to store information and perform calculations. Qubits come in many different types. Some are single atoms, some are photons of light, some are superconductors. But there's no one predominant type. You could say we haven't decided yet which one will be the quantum transistor. And it's likely that we'll need different types for different problems. So we're building a control system that's adaptable to different qubit types, leaving the door open for an ecosystem of technologies to develop. Crucially for practical quantum error correction, the control system must respond rapidly to commands from the rest of the operating system. Too much delay means errors spread through the computer and ultimately will limit its usefulness. So we've designed our control system for maximum speed and precision. The decoders within the kernel are there to help detect errors that affect the physical qubits. Error correction and decoders are used in classical computing, but in the quantum world, there's two big differences. Firstly, looking at the data causes the qubits to collapse and lose the information they're storing. So we need to introduce additional syndrome qubits to act as a proxy. Secondly, as we scale to quantum computers with many thousands, possibly millions of qubits, vast amounts of information needs to be processed. This is because the number of errors we see is very high, typically around one in a hundred or one in a thousand operations compared to less than one in a trillion in classical computing. To address these challenges, we're developing new, highly efficient techniques for decoding and innovative ways of implementing them on dedicated hardware. The control system and decoders are critical components, but on their own, they cannot run a quantum program. Orchestrating their operation to implement the error correction cycle and ultimately execute the program is the role of the runtime system, the final part of the kernel. So there you have the three elements of our kernel, a control system, decoders, and the runtime system. Individually, these elements need to perform their function effectively. But the systems engineering investment Riverlane's making to get these elements to work together seamlessly is what transforms them into a complete quantum error correction solution. At Riverlane, we are building an operating system that connects enterprise users with engineers in the lab designing quantum hardware. This is something that's enormously challenging today, but only by facilitating this collaboration will quantum computers fulfill their incredible potential.